our program, our presentation centers around three issues regarding pregnancy. The first issue is ensuring that your patient doesn't get pregnant while they're on chemotherapy. The other issue is you have patients that are pregnant that get diagnosed with cancer while they're pregnant. And then the third issue is um, you know, uh, fertility preservation in the cancer survivor. Initially in the 90s, our first patient popped up. There weren't a lot of drugs available, but she got adriocytoxin, and then when she was done, she was ER positive, so went on tamoxifen, which is very iatrogenic. And several, she'd been on tamoxifen several months when she had some abdominal pain and discomfort and went in for an ultrasound to rule out, they thought maybe gallbladder, and they saw she had a 32-week gestation baby there. And we needed to let her know that there could have been some chemotherapy effects on the baby. So we had to trace back and do a little search, chart search and survey. And what we realized, she probably got pregnant at the very end of her first trimester. And so we watched her very carefully, did a lot of surveillance, and she delivered a normal delivery. And the um, baby was put in the ICU overnight, just for precautions. And the next day, he was discharged. And because she wasn't a US resident, um, once the baby was delivered, she was lost to follow up. So we don't know how she did. But the baby did very well. and had a great APGAR score and um, you know when she when she left the hospital. Um, several years later we had another issue where we had a patient who was getting concurrent chemotherapy and radiation so she was seen by the research nurse and um, had a urine sent for pregnancy and she had a 17 centimeter cervical mass so she was going to get radiation to her belly and then chemotherapy and so she got all her workup done and Monday morning she went to radiation and had her belly radiated and then came up to the infusion clinic where the same nurse that was involved with that first incident or, or knew about our pregnancy policy realized she needed a serum pregnancy. And so she sent that and it was positive and she was pregnant and we had just radiated her belly. So the fetus could not survive with radiation directly to the cervix. So that ended up being issues for the, for the hospital and we had to let the patient know we had just radiated her and that we did have a positive pregnancy test. And then the other story, which sort of blends into Tanya's, we, um, we had a, a, a young woman, I think she was 28, newly wed, um, come in, she had a sarcoma in her right femur, so they were going to give her chemotherapy up front two cycles, take her to the OR, resect it, and rod her femur, and give her chemotherapy after, and the goal is curative disease. So I went in to do her teaching for her chemo, and the first thing I asked was about fertility, and she was just amazed that no one had brought that up to her ahead of time and she was very outraged that we had not discussed this with her up front and she's getting, we're we starting her IV to give her her chemotherapy. So that's the other thing, you know, teaching the nursing staff and teaching everyone to address this issue up front. It's, a lot, you know, up until the last three or four years, no one talked about fertility, especially for the cancer survivor up front. It was just something we dealt with after the fact. So that's another reason I, I wanted to put this project together was so that the nursing staff are more aware and even the physician staff and now ASCO's standard of care is that they address fertility up front before they start treatment. You know therapy was our goal we needed to get started and really couldn't wait for him to go into the therapies that Tanya was talking about like in vitro harvesting the eggs that takes several weeks and they just really didn't have the time with her.